In this third part of his essay, Bertrand Russell critiques the argument from design. And the first summary of the argument, the first sentence or so, is, is almost good, except that the argument from design isn't just saying that everything is designed for us to be able to live in the world. That's not the whole story. What we're saying is that we see intelligibility in the universe. We see an intelligence there. And it's on three levels. First of all, the constants of nature, the laws of nature, the universe itself, uh, there is there's order of pristine beauty there. And I'm going to have a lot of quotes at the end of this video as a testimony to that from scientists and mathematicians, that kind of thing. Also, we see encoded information. We see genetics. That's a code. And that's some type of design that's there. And also, there are intelligent beings, us humans, we ourselves, our ability to do things like math, you know, to have mathematicians like Bertrand Russell, that is intelligence. There is intelligence in the universe, and that intelligence has to come from somewhere. We don't get intelligibility and intelligence just from random mere matter interactions. Albert Einstein said that the most incomprehensible thing about the world is that it is comprehensible. The very fact that there are human beings here, that there is intelligence in the universe, is an incredible thing. Um, and in th that intelligibility has to come from an intellect, then. Um, he then goes on to point out that the world is full of defects, and in that he's right. But the fact is that defects imply some purpose or design. If there's no purpose, there's no design, nothing like that, then there can't be any defect. Right? For example, we don't go around complaining about the fact that we don't have three eyes because we aren't made for three eyes. Um, it's, it's not part of our experience. It's not part of something that we expect to have. So pointing out defects shows that there is some intelligibility and some intelligence that perhaps we're not living up to. It implies that there is some purpose of design to point out defects, to build just the very fact that we're able to notice that. And he says, is this the best that omniscience and omnipotence can do? First of all, we can't see the whole picture. Uh, things unfold for us in time the, in a way that they don't for God. But for, what, for us, um, we don't deny the defects. We affirm that God in his freedom and his wis in wisdom allows them. You know, we think it's at least possible that God in his freedom and wisdom could allow defects for a greater purpose. And we believe, Christians believe, that God allows them in order to bring out of them some greater good. And uh, logically, that's what he would have to deal with, but he's not even bringing up that issue here. Um, also pointing out, this is not an argument against God in general. Instead, it's an argument against a God who would not allow any defects, and that is not the God of serious Christian thinkers. So here are some quotes about design, that there is design in the universe, not only in the universe itself, by itself, but also in us, to be able to recognize that type of design that implies there's design in us, intelligibility and intelligence, to be able to match up and describe the world in terms of mathematics, and even to be able to do mathematics itself.